Apple at this point is obviously compromised. Goes without saying, Tim Cook has sold out all Apple customers from incredible products to horrible corporate practices. Today, in Operation Take Another Bite Out of Your Apple, we're gonna talk about how Apple has decided to sell out your privacy, how Apple has decided to skirt the law when it comes to your iPhone, when it comes to every product you have, and how Apple spies on you, what you can do in Operation Applesauce. All right, well, it's no secret I'm a huge fan of Apple. I think they make great products. But you're going to want to buckle up for this one because we've been able to connect the dots on some of the things that have been happening over the last roughly two years. Now, you got to keep in mind, no computer company or technology company is going to be a pillar of privacy. Just is not in their best interest. You understand that when you use a lot of these companies, you are the product. Companies like social media, companies like search engines. You are the product. Now, there's better options. Obviously, DuckDuckGo is probably better than Google Search. Obviously, Firefox Focus is probably better than using Safari or Chrome, right? There are aha options. And here on PrivacyX, we broke down some of the best options. You go to privacyxproject.com and get a bunch of our recommendations to set up your system privately and get 10 times better the privacy you currently have for free. So check that out. But when it comes to Apple, when it comes to your computer, when it comes to your device, whether it's Linux or Android or Apple or any system, you do need to lock it down. Now, obviously, systems like Linux have a lot more open source and, and user features that you can control. Apple is more closed source, and they feel that they know best. Now, Apple's a great product for creatives content creators, small businesses, creative style businesses, not so much on the networking and large corporate side. That's where you see more windows, which obviously is 10 times worse than Apple when it comes to privacy. But Apple has had some fundamental issues the last couple of years. And it's really, really frustrating and unfortunate for those of us consumers who care about privacy. Now I know that this is not going to be the most private machine, but I sacrifice a few things to gain a few things. And as long as you use your Apple devices in a specific way that we've broken down, you get a pretty strong level of privacy. Now, we've seen Tim Cook come out and talk about privacy a couple of times in the last year. And when you see a CEO of a company brag that, well, we could have made a bunch more money if we used our customers as products, but we don't do that. We choose not to do that. We could make tons of money if we decided to, to use our customers as products, but we don't do that. Like he needs a gold star and a pat on the back for not selling out his own customers like some of these other companies do. But then if you dig a little deeper, so when you get an Apple device, what is the first thing the Apple device asks you? What is the first thing it wants? One of the first things. Apple ID, right? We all have Apple ID. Well, how you set up your Apple ID is crucial. Your Apple ID needs to not be tied to a real identity. It always shocks me how many people, if something asks you for your information, you just give it to them willy-nilly. You should never give anybody your real name unless it's a government federal style form. Otherwise, why do they need your real name? Your real name is connected to your identity. And in a world where we have supersonic doxing and people hacking and people dealing with identity theft. Why are you giving out your name willy nilly? If you give me your name, I could run it through a bunch of private investigator databases and paid databases that privacy X we use. And I could get information about you that you probably forgot. There's so much data on the internet about you. You need to actively retract that data. Now, there are ways to get that data out of those databases, painstaking. Again, we talk about that on the Privacy X podcast, but it takes work. I've done that, and a lot of people I know, people I work with have done that, but it takes a lot of work. So they ask for your ID. They ask for phone numbers. They ask for, I mean, there's a lot of services online now that want you to verify with an ID, an, an actual driver's license. You're insane if you do that because you're giving out all your data. Now, you also got to watch what information you actually put on your driver's license, but that's for another video. But when it comes to data and when it comes to, you know, you go to the store, what's your phone number? 
You should never give them your real phone number. Have a dummy number to give them or just say, I don't know, 555, you know, go kick rocks. It's none of your business. What's your email? My email is um, Cody's an astronaut at AOL.com. Try that one. See if that works. You know, who cares? Don't give out your data. So many of you have all of your real name and, and address and phone number and all this stuff locked in. It is incredible. So the first thing you need to do, which goes out saying, is not give any real information. But it goes deeper than that because that's going to work at the grocery store. If you're getting your favorite club card, you can really dupe the system with telling them your name is Sam Smith and giving them a dummy Google voice number and a dummy email. And you really feel like a, a real secret agent. But on, on these technological devices, they're going to quickly be able to link your real information because you're going to put in the internet. Now, I use a VPN router, meaning they don't actually have a direct connection to my ISP. It's a secure tunnel. Now there are fundamental security issues with that, but again, we've talked about VPNs and VPN routers before. So you can, you can reference those videos here on privacy X to check that out. So what do you do? Well, at, at the end of the day, you need to understand that Apple really is going to get some of your real information. They just are. You need to divert it as much as possible. You need to divert from the app. So what does Apple do and how exactly do they sell you out with this info? Because they're, they brag that they don't use their customers as a product, which is a complete and blatant lie. Now, I don't care where you stand publicly or publicly. <laughs> I don't care where you stand publicly. I don't care where you stand politically. This is not a political thing, but I'm going to mention something. So I don't need any of you who are all political to jump on the bandwagon because it doesn't matter. But there was an app called Parler. Now we've seen, it, we've seen Apple and Google boot them out of their, of their app store, which gives them oligarchy style, dictator style control over the apps you get, which is ridiculous. And then we've seen Amazon, one of the biggest communist companies out there, just literally deliver the death blow. Jeff Bezos might be the biggest hypocrite on earth. He wants to pay Amazon employees $9, but then, you know, he, I'm not even gonna get into Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is a piece of actual garbage, but, and Amazon is, is an important company. It's, it's done a lot of, uh, of value. Amazon actually has more value than a lot of people. Jeff Bezos has no value to humanity, but you look at the structure and it's good that Jeff Bezos is starting to pivot out of Amazon. Maybe the company will be a little bit better. But you look at these CEOs and what they actually do and their, their hypocrisy and, and what they're doing. You know, I, I love how all of these guys come out and they're for all these things. And then behind the scenes, they structure their life against all these things. Not to get political, but it's a fact. All these people that you think are for the people and for all this stuff. And then you look at their personal life and they do everything in their power to, to do the complete opposite. Which is hilarious how the American system works. But with, with Apple specifically, and Tim Cook specifically, they gather your data at a rapid rate based on all of your, everything you do. You basically have a internal Apple profile. Okay, everything you do, everything you search, every app you go on, and they control that because they are your OS. They are your operating system. Now, the interesting thing about this is when they deleted Parler, it's because they didn't like the direction the app was going. <sighs> well, I mean, Parler was for the right what Twitter is for the left, but they just didn't like that. I mean, if, if they compared apples to apples, they would take Twitter off the internet. Now, they can't take Twitter off the internet because Twitter actually owns their own servers, so Twitter couldn't, Amazon couldn't do to Twitter what they did for Parler, but Apple, and Google could delist Twitter, but they won't. They could also delist a lot of other websites that I won't name, but they won't. But they specifically singled out a company because they want to have control of the narrative. Now that's a problem. Now, and I don't care if you're right or left, it's a problem because if it can happen to one side, it can happen to the other. It's not a right thing or a left thing or a center thing. It's a freedom of speech thing. And the internet, you should be able to police yourself. You don't need these useless tech companies trying to do it for you. And then the next thing, the next issue you're going to have, and, and, and it's ironic that, um, well, I'm not even going to touch that topic. Never mind. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to try to stick a little bit on topic, which is not my strong suit. We all know I could go on a rapid rant 
for 20 hours if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to stay on topic a little bit, just a little bit. So the next thing when it comes to Apple, and one of the next fundamental problems when it comes to Apple is when you have your Apple ID, they create a profile, and then Apple catalogs everything you do on the internet. And then they use it in the sake of advertising. See, the biggest downfall to the internet is well, everything we do is for your best interest. It's for advertising. It's kind of like the government saying everything they do is for your safety. The government doesn't care about the people's safety. And these computer companies don't care about you getting special ads. They care about data collecting. Data mining is one of the biggest businesses in the world right now. In the world, data mining is one of the biggest businesses on planet Earth. It rivals oil. Do you understand that? It rivals oil. Your data rivals oil. So when we look at this, we look at some of the biggest industries and data being one of them, Apple is one of the biggest data miners in the world. And the reason they're able to do this is because even Microsoft, you have options. Apple is closed source. As much as I hate Windows and Microsoft, and I'll never use their products, Linux is the best. But Linux has a lot of downfalls. You give up a lot if you use Linux, if you're a business owner and an entrepreneur, depending upon the type of business. Now, don't get me wrong, Linux is incredible, and I love Linux, and I use Linux all the time. I've done a lot of videos here on this channel about Linux, about Hoonix, about VirtualBox, about how to set up private and secure uh, tunnels, about how to you know use Tor and the dark web. I, I'm all about Linux, don't get me wrong. But there are limitations. There, there, there just are. You can pretend like there's alternatives, but you'd be wrong, okay? There are reasons where Apple shines, and that's why I still use Apple. I just use it very, very carefully because I don't trust Apple as a company anymore. Now, I've never had extreme trust in any big tech companies because it, it, it's, it's against your best interest, but they've lost a lot more of my trust the last one to two years with everything that's going on. Things like they put that stupid tracker app on your phone just because they felt like it. The problem is they have too much control to do whatever they want. When they can add, you know, a, 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 a pandemic tracker app and, and you know, who have you been around and they're gonna start geotech, no, dude, no, I got rid of that instantly. And the problem with, with companies like Apple and the problem with these ecosystems, whether it's Apple, whether it's Google, whether it's Microsoft, any of these ecosystems is you give these companies too much control. This is why I talk about compartmentalizing. And I do compartmentalize. As much as I use Apple, I use Linux, I use other things. I have multiple different phones. I use Blackberry. I use, uh, you know, you could use Android. You can use iPhone. You can use things like Graphene OS, which I've talked about here on Privacy X. So compartmentalization is key. But with Apple specifically, the next thing Apple is trying to do is they're trying to dictate your viewing experience. So everything you see, whether it's from search, whether it's from the app store, whether it's the way everything's structured, and they have the ability to bury things. I mean, when they wipe, it was the number one app when they got rid of Parler. The number one. Number one, okay? And, you know, they talked about banning TikTok. Now, am I, do I care? No, if they ban TikTok, would it, would it break my heart? No. But just the fact that they talked about doing it, it shows how pathetic. These are apps that are threats to national security. I mean, the, these are, uh, you know, I mean, the biggest threat is, you know, some of these, I mean, some of these parents need to, need to maybe parent their children better. I think that's the biggest threat on TikTok. And on Parler, you know, the reality is if we have this division and we have these problems, we're not going to sow it by further creating division. And that's what these tech companies want. That's what Twitter wants. That's what, I mean, I don't even wanna mention Facebook. That's the biggest garbage company in the world. But uh, that's what these companies want. That's why I almost exclusively don't use most social media platforms anymore. Because they're just useless. They're just literally, like I haven't been on Twitter in years. I actually had a pretty decent following on Twitter uh, years ago and I deleted it because it's just, there's no value. You go on Twitter and you feel like you've you wasted a portion of like you nobody's ever gone on twitter and be like oh that was great it's just garbage it's gross you need to take a shower after you go on twitter it's just the worst place on the internet i mean at least yeah it's just it's horrible and so with companies like apple starting to really put their thumb down on what you can do and how you can do it it's starting to become a serious problem they're trying to create this utopia-esque world for you and they want to keep you in this box and then nothing else is possible. And then 
Apple talking about how they're not selling your data is just simply not true. The connection with Apple TV, which they literally sell your data to all of these uh, broadcasters, and Apple TV connects into all these streaming services because streaming is the number one business. So it's, it's, a, it's a behavioral-based algorithm similar to all the streaming services, whether it's Hulu, Amazon, Netflix, et cetera. You, got, you see them with Showtime, with, with now they've got Paramount+, Plus, Disney+, Plus, all these different companies are streaming now. And they're all taking your information. It goes through your smart TV and then it connects. And so it's, you know, I don't want to go too far down a rabbit hole, but guys, it, it basically is brainwashing. It's brainwashing 101. They're, they're, they're putting in front of you what you want to see. Have you watched a TV show lately? Have you watched any, like I'm not a TV guy, but I watched that TV show SWAT a couple episodes. It's got like that, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know. It, it, it's a decent, like, I'm not a big cop drama show. I'm not a big TV show guy, but I saw that and there was some action and there's, I was like, oh, this is cool. And while I was doing some email and stuff, I put it on the background. It, I mean, it, the, the stuff it talks about in that show, the, I mean, they're using these TV shows to, I mean, they've always used them for, for pop culture and big events and stuff. But I mean, they are literally trying to plant all of these ridiculous ideas in people's head. If you watch the show SWAT, particularly the most recent season, you'll be blown away by what these people talk about in this fictional TV show. It is incredible. And you're seeing this more and more with content. I mean, one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life was the most recent Bad Boys. I, at one time, I was a huge Will Smith fan. Will Smith is a literal D-bag at this point. I'll never watch that clown's video videos again. But I used to be a big Will Smith fan when I was younger. Have you seen the recent Bad Boys movie? How they are trying to sow division and racism in that ridiculous... Like, I'm out on Hollywood. I don't watch any movies anymore, any of these shows anymore. It's basically documentaries or podcasts or content creators that I know or like. That's it. And Hollywood is suffering and dying because of it. And they're crying about their numbers. I mean, CNN literally wanted to, uh, wanted to put together a plan where they could get rid of most YouTubers because they say it's not fair of how much, like all the news on YouTube, they think that you should have to have a license. What happened to a free and open press? Well, CNN wants you to have licenses, right? And they connect directly into companies like Apple. So they're creating this, this, ecosystem of what they want it to be free and open as long as it's them but when it's you they don't want you to have any choices i mean you're getting these big companies uh, that are that are literally wanting to block the little guy and rise them up but they're agreeing that it should be free and because if, if the press wasn't free and open the morons at cnn would be the first to go but no no, they want it to be free and open as long as they're the free and open. They want everyone else to be blocked. You have to have licenses. You have to have special credentials. Who gives out the credentials? Probably them or Twitter, right? So this is the problem we're going into. And Apple is starting to play into the hand of we want to have the control. And so it's not even just a privacy issue. It's not even just a control issue. It's not even just a First Amendment issue. It's literally just an issue of these companies having too much control. And so for you, what can you do? Because on Privacy X, I don't like to just talk about the problem. I also like to talk about the solution. And the solution starts with misinformation. You need to start your Apple completely misinformation. And if you already have an Apple ID and it's got your name and address and your email, delete it and start a new one and use a dummy email and a dummy name and a dummy address. And then, you know, don't use payment through Apple. And if you do use something like privacy.com or use one of these secure credit cards that I talk about, I've talked about in videos, how you can get literal secure credit cards that don't have your information to the vendor. Now keep in mind, there's two different types of security. Okay. There's complete security, which is really tough. And a lot of my privacy clients, I talk to with this and I teach people how to go complete ghost. I teach people how to do ghost businesses and how to build basic ghost lives like I've done. That's a whole different bag of worms. But if you're just getting started, you don't need to go down that rabbit hole. What you can do is you can use one of these services where they have your information, but they don't give your information to vendor. Like even privacy.com. Not, don't confuse that with PrivacyX. PrivacyX is my company, but Privacy.com basically allows you to connect a card 
and then you can it's a burner card that you can burn with vendors and there's a lot of other companies that do stuff that's similar and that way the company doesn't have your information now these are always good because a you can cancel at any time without having to cancel through the company it just makes the card go dead because you know a lot of these companies make you jump through 90 hoops to cancel the other thing you can do is it doesn't give the vendor any of your information right so you need to pull back your information your data <clears throat> now we talk about vpns we talk about tour we talk about these things unless you're using a virtual machine you're really not going to be able to hide a lot of your information from apple because they can connect it directly at the source because again they are your operating system so the best way to do this is virtual machine and i've done a video here on privacy x where i literally go step by step how to set up a virtual machine with with uh, all the steps needed, whether you're using Tor or any other service, but it basically compartmentalizes. Now, why would you do this? Well, do all your important stuff on a virtual machine, and then when you're just doing random browsing and stuff, but keep in mind, they do catalog everything you do. You think, well, if I use a VPN, there's no logs. Yeah, your operating system is a different story, buddy. They got the root of everything, so they're, they're below everything. But ultimately, Ultimately, Apple claims they don't log everything and keep data and they take your permissions, but everything is turned on and they take as much data as they can. And you have to go through about 90 to 120 steps to turn all these uh, privacy controls off, whether it's on your iPhone or Apple. And that's better than Android. Android is literally almost impossible unless you use Graphene OS because it's connected directly to Google. So with the exception of Graphene OS uh, through a couple other, I mean, you've got some Linux phones that are getting more popular. Obviously, Linux phones are good. I still use a BlackBerry for one of my uh, one of my client phones, and that's good. Obviously, it's a little bit antiquated technology, but it's good. But you really need to break these things down. And so it starts with misinformation. A misinformation campaign is one of the best things you can do. And really breaking down how you can get started without without giving all your data and then and then keeping that up it's, it's basically aliases and everyone on the internet should use aliases at a certain point and you should also start going through the process of compartmentalizing your work your home your your more secure stuff like bank or like private stuff and then uh you know just general like hey how much is the cost of a two by four oh forty dollars great Good to know, you know, stupid stuff that really doesn't matter. But keep in mind, if you take someone's search history and you think you delete your search history, you've deleted it, you're out of your mind. You take someone's search history, you can literally piece together their thoughts, you know, what they're thinking about. Your search engine is literally an extension of your thoughts. I know people that'll just search everything they're thinking. So keep that in mind when you're going through this process. Anyway, guys, really appreciate you checking out this video. Be careful when you're setting up this technology because it is spying on you, it is tracking you, and you may not think it's important. You may think you have nothing to hide, but privacy is a right and it's a right that needs to be protected. And if you do not protect your right to privacy, you will not have an expectation or a right to privacy, and you will regret that decision long term when you have government overreaching, as they already are, but the overreach is going to get greater and greater and greater when you have people say, well, privacy is not that important. You don't have any privacy nowadays anyway. Well, you have it if you create it. You have it if you create it. I had a person recently claim they were going to dox me, and they came out with an address in Minnesota. Hey, bro. Oh, misinformation. I've never even, I've never even remotely lived in Minnesota. There are six addresses for me in Minnesota, and I've been doing this since 2011. I talk about this in a podcast where I got hacked on identity theft back about 10 years ago, and where I really started going down the rabbit hole of privacy, and... My main address is in Minnesota. Guess what? I got a beautiful home in Minnesota that I've never seen, never been to, and uh, don't even know where it is. But it's in Minnesota, and I've got an address there. It's somebody else's address, but not my problem. Misinformation is key, guys. This idiot thought they were going to dox me. Uh, sorry, bro. Everything's in land trusts and LLCs that you couldn't find if your life depended on. The federal government would have to spend days unwinding the situation that I have, and good luck. You would need a national database to do it because I spent 10 years creating a spider web of incredibleness, which is exactly what I do for my privacy clients and exactly how you build a ghost life and a ghost business. And even if you don't take it to the extremes that I've taken it, you should take it to the point where you're safe and secure and you don't have these companies selling out all your information. If they're going to sell your information and you don't care, why aren't you getting a cut of it? It's kind of like the banks taking your money, investing it 99 times and you get none of it or like 0.051%. Oh, that 
makes saving money worthwhile, doesn't it? No, not, a, not even a little bit. You'll literally get beat by inflation. You've been bested by inflation. You gotta be kidding me right now. So this is the system we live in. The banks can invest our money at no risk and they get all the reward. And the, da- and the tech companies can steal our data, sell it for trillions with a T. Trillions of dollars get all the benefit and we get nothing. Throw a monkey wrench in the system and become a private citizen. Anyway, guys, really appreciate you checking this out. Have an amazing day. Go all in and everything you do, and I'll see you guys in the next video.